can make a speaker together, okay? <clears throat> this is the design I'm thinking of. It's going to be laser cut, and it also might be leather, but it all depends on how leather handles on the laser because we're using a new one today. Something distinct about the Creality Falcon 2 diode laser cutter is that in comparison to other diodes that I've tried anyway, it required basically no assembly. It was about 10 minutes between getting it out of the box it came in and getting it cutting the box it came in. Here's what that first cut looks like. And obviously it's hard to like get a full feel for something on just cardboard because cardboard laser cuts really easily. But I did notice right away that the kerf looked really tight, really small, which is nice to see, um, especially because this design uses living hinges and living hinges kind of require having a nice small kerf in order to work well and look nice. And this was the result of my first living hinge cut on the Creality laser cutter. Now it is in cardboard again, which is going to bend a bit easier than wood will. But I noticed that the charring was really minimal. And I don't know, again, that really tight curve you can see here, which seemed really promising. One of the other reasons why I really like prototyping on cardboard besides just that it cuts really quickly and easily is that it's easy to sketch changes directly on the object that I can like hold in my hands. Uh, I'm going to pull, I'm going to kind of like squish the design out a little bit like if I were to stretch this horizontally and then I'm also adding stitching holes around the exterior border. I think that it will look visually nicer but also help keep that leather, leather more securely on the face of this. And another thing I wanna to touch upon as this second version is cutting is that I'm cutting this on top of the honeycomb that's in my Laguna EX laser bed because that machine has really strong ventilation um, and the diode laser cutters have open beds and do not come with ventilation. So I have mixed feelings about that on the diode laser cutters. It's not something specific to the Creality. You're gonna find this with most diode laser cutters, but I would highly, highly recommend having a strong plan in place to handle ventilation if you're gonna put one of these in your shop. In my case, I just stuck it in my bigger laser cutter, but I don't know if that'll be like, would be an option for most people. But yeah, just something I definitely wanted to talk about before we got too far along. Bada bing. <laughs> okay, so the st stiff cardboard is going to mimic plywood in this prototype. And then I'm also cutting the same pattern at a chipboard because that's going to mimic where the leather's going to go just so that I can get a feel for how this is all going to go together in the end and this is version number two I am much happier with these proportions I think and feeling pretty ready to throw some plywood in there and see how that cuts on this laser if all goes well these will be the final pieces Plywood cuts pretty horribly on laser cutters, just in general. I think because the adhesives that are in there, it's just very difficult to get a consistent, smooth cut. But these sections are going to be hidden under leather, so it feels like kind of a waste to use a nicer solid wood for these cuts if I don't need to. figure if the diode laser does not handle the plywood as well as I would like, I have solid wood as a backup. Well, this ended up being two passes at a 90% power and the speed was, I believe, at 20, something, about, something like that. But I did two passes and that seemed to make all the difference in the world. And this is the back panel of the speaker set. I started with this one because there's less details on it, but safe to say that plywood's going to be a great pick for the material. So I went ahead and cut the front panel now. So the plywood's gonna provide the structure that we need for this speaker, but we want it to look like leather.
And this is the scrap of the same shoulder of leather I used for my piggy bank. And we're just gonna give it a go on the diode laser cutter. I've never cut leather on a diode laser before. It handles really nicely on a CO2 laser though. And after a singular test, it clearly handles really well on the diode too. Last thing to check is that they will fit nicely on top of their plywood counterparts. I don't know if there'll be like any shrinkage or anything, but they fit perfectly. So when does that ever happen in one try? I don't know. It happened today though. In a previous build, I figured out that it's not really worth bothering with masking material on leather because uh, leather conditioner, just like I sprayed on here with a cloth wipe, pulls all of the laser smudges off really, really nicely. And um, the leather gets dark when it gets moist, but it's not going to like discolor the leather or anything when this dries off. It'll look just like it did before, but without the smudges. It was so nice out this day. So I ended up going outside to do the sewing section of this. And I'm using a running stitch and I'm trying my best to hide the knots between the like leather and wood panel. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter too much if the back is ugly because it's going to be on the inside of the speaker uh, as long as the outside is looking good. Uh, to do a running stitch, you'll see on the back side, I'm skipping forward two holes, threading it through and then going back one Ta-da! I think it looks really nice. As a little contrast, I decided to go with the metallic silver thread around the speaker holes. Um, same process, just metallic silver. And um, yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say. This part's really relaxing, but I don't know if it makes the most exciting video content. You tell me in the comments below. Let's make a living hinge. I'm starting with an eighth inch thick piece of walnut laser ready sheet. You can get these on makersworkshop.com. We prep all of them in house. They're kiln dried and sourced thoughtfully from trees in the Boston area. We have a wide range of hardwood varieties. Today I'm using walnut. Living hinges can be pretty delicate when they're done. So I did all the sanding on this wood before I put it even I, before I even put it into the laser cutter. And then I'm also gonna throw some masking material on this. On both sides, I'm using painter's tape and this will make sure that the wood stays clean from char and stuff. So again, I don't need to go back in with um, a sander of any sort to clean it up after the laser cut. This footage isn't sped up because I want to be able to show the real speed of all of this. The engraves took two passes to get it thick enough to where I felt like it would be a nice workable ledge for the glue up. And you can really see the smoke kicking off of this. This has the ventilation on for the laser bed itself and I'm watching it wearing laser glasses and an N95 mask. I felt comfortable with this. But remember when it comes to PPE in the shop, you're always better safe than sorry and erring on the side of caution. Uh, and then these are the settings I used for the cuts on the living hinge. It's really important that these are smooth, otherwise it just won't work. But I seemed to find a you know, setting that, that got through it really, really cleanly. And then I think I ended up doing two passes just for good measure, just to be sure. But it might have worked with one pass, I think. The smoke is going through the honeycomb, which is always a good sign. So a good rule of thumb that I've found over the years is that if you see smoke going, coming out below the workpiece through the honeycomb, that's a good indicator that your cut went all the way through. In comparison, if the smoke is coming out above the workpiece, it probably didn't cut all the way through.
It's gonna take two of these living hinges glued together like so to make it over the uh, entire top of the speaker. I designed this so that every piece would fit on the Falcon 2 laser cutter bed size and also on Maker's Workshop 12 by six laser ready sheets. But that being said, if you have access to a bigger bed size and a larger piece of walnut or any wood, I guess, um, you can do it all as one piece. So I did it as one piece. I just wanted to say it and point it out before getting too far along in the project. So it wasn't confusing. I'll put this a little dot of CA glue right there so it's not touching the hinge. Yep. And then we'll put one right there. So it's not touching the hinge. So it's not touching the okay. hinge. I'll put the activator on that side. Sounds good. To glue this, we are going to be using a combination of CA glue and wood glue. CA glue dries on contact with an activator, but it's not as strong. Wood glue takes longer to dry, but is a really strong hold. So we're going to use CA glue drops, like little clamps, between stretches of wood glue. We marked the center point of the living hinge and the center point of the side piece with red. And so we're lining the red marks up with each other so that it's perfectly centered. And then we are very carefully rolling this up and spraying the activator through the living hinge, <laughs> which was, it was definitely a two person job, but it worked out really, really well. The hardest part of this is just making sure it's seated in that groove the whole way around. So this is how I'm going to leave it to dry overnight with the glue in there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there's like an easier solution I just didn't think of, but this is what I'm doing. Next, I've got to get off all of this tape. I think I need a tool. You are a tool. <laughs> Ouch. That Burn. one. That one stung. Burn. <laughs>
The finished shell had a really nice look and feel to it. The leather paired with the stitching, paired with the wood. It was just, it just felt really durable. I don't know, it held well. Is there a word for that? Okay, so the bottom needs to be closed up. I'm just gonna cut a piece of walnut to fit this on the bandsaw. It'll probably be quicker, but I'm gonna include in the pattern for this uh, a laser cut for this piece as well. And this is just going to pressure fit into the bottom of this. So it'll pop in and out easily if I ever need to access the electronics um, and also sit nice and flush. For finish, I'm using Osmo, which is a hard wax oil. It's my favorite finish. I use this on everything. And this is going on all the walnut sections. I don't have a magic secret trick to finishing up the living hinge. I just went really, really slowly and did really thin coats to make sure I didn't spill it uh, and get it on the leather because it will stain the leather. And then it was time to put in the Rockler speaker kit. And this was really easy to use. I, if the red went to the red, blue to blue, white to white. Um, and this all disconnected to make it really easy to slip these into place. The pieces basically pressure fit in, but for good measure, I thought I'd throw in some epoxy on the interior just to make sure it's not going to move around or anything like that. And then once the epoxy set, I could snap the wires all back together and then pop my bottom piece into place. Bluetooth mode. It's on. Bluetooth connected successfully. Whose phone do we think it's connected to? Hey Siri. If you want to laser cut your own speaker, the file I designed in this video is available on makersworkshop.com and I will also link all the tools and materials I used in the information of this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.